Hello everyone, welcome to another Incarnate Livestream. Today we're making wizard towers. Now of course what, you're, what we're going to be learning in this stream you could make, really you can apply to any tower, but hey, we're going to be putting a magic wielding baddie in this tower because hey, wizard tower encounters are an absolute staple of fantasy role playing games. So of course we got to make a wizard's tower. Hello everyone. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed the holidays by the way. It's time to get back to it and hey I'm excited to do this stream today. We have a lot to cover. Hey first time chatter nothing 117. Hello. I am glad that you're here. Hope you enjoyed your holiday. Hey we got a lot to cover in this stream. We're going to be covering how to put together foundations, multiple floors, how to apply themes to a floor, how to put details in the floor to show what the theme is of each floor, how to put together stairwells going up and down, foundations, assembling roofs, multiple floors. I mean, we have so much to cover today. So let's just not waste too much time. I'm going to do a real quick announcement. Hey, another first time chatter. Welcome. Glad that you're here. And thank you, Nothing117. I'm really glad that you're here and I appreciate your support. I love making maps and I love sharing with you how I make maps. That's the whole point of these streams. Now, I only got just one real quick announcement. And that is, is that we uh, released our January map prompts every single month. We have a map prompt for each week. So go check those out. This week is Bridge of Dreams. So definitely jump in on that because map prompts really help to make you a better map maker. And of course, we've also released January stream calendar. So go check that out as well. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's jump in. You're gonna wanna clone and edit this map. And of course, you can find that in the chat. If you're following along on YouTube, that's going to be in the video description. All right, let's just jump right in. Now, if the first time, if you're for first time viewers, again, I'm glad you're here. We're going to be going over some important things like process. What do you start with? How do you deal with getting discouraged? A whole bunch of stuff. So strap in, okay? All right. Now, first things first, whenever I'm working on any kind of map, I always do what's called pre-planning. If you don't do the planning right away, if you don't do the planning first, you're going to be going through the planning phase when assembling the map. And that's going to discourage you because you don't want to do two things at once, figuring out what you're creating and then trying to create it. Figure out what you're doing first, do the pre-planning, and then assemble the map because it's so easy. I can tell you from personal experience that within the first 30 minutes of my map, I hate it. I just hate it because you know what? It's just incomplete. It's not the vision in your head. So of course, if you do some pre-planning, this will help with that discouragement. And of course, it will also just give you an idea of what you're working on. So pre-planning means writing down what rooms you have, what floors they're going to be on, what's the theme of each floor or each room. So I want you to take a look at the diagram that I've made on the right side. It is made of paths and stamps. The paths are the line work, just a white path without shadow, and rugs with the brightness from the HBAC settings all the way set to zero. Now I put these diagrams together because they help me to kind of understand like a vertical representation of what I'm putting together. In other words, it's a reference. And you know what? Even the greatest artists, the most talented artists, use references because it's really, really hard just to figure out stuff inside your mind alone. It's nice to have an image reference to help you when you're putting it together. Even if you have an idea in your head what you want, having some kind of reference is really, really going to be helpful to you. So it's just another weapon in your arsenal to, as an artist or as a DM to make maps. Okay, so pre-planning is a must. So let's take a look at our floors here and what we're going to be doing. That first floor, well, really, let's talk. take a look at the foundation. Towers are you know, what makes them iconic and interesting is how tall they are. And because they're so tall, they need a strong foundation for the floors for the tower to step on, to stand on. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about fantasy versus function, okay? You want a little bit of both. You want a little bit of function because it's recognizable to the human eye. We relate to reality, but also this is D&D. So we want fantasy as well. So if you have a, a nice balance of function and fantasy, the map will be well received by your players, if you're a commission artist, by your clients, okay? 
Now, because the towers are so tall, they need a sturdy foundation because if you don't have a strong foundation, then the walls will not set correctly and it will tip, break, natural erosion will affect it more. So having a sturdy foundation is totally necessary for tall structures such as a tower. Okay, and we're going to put some defenses on the foundation as well. You can notice that there's a barbican there, and a barbican is basically a gatehouse. So there's going to be a, a defense mechanism there that's going to protect the tower's inhabitants, whether there's some guards there or a wizard there as well. It's going to protect them from attackers. Okay, so now the first rooms function. When we think about the foundation as the defense, it only makes sense that the first floor should be the guard room right? It's where the guards can leave the room, go out and man the barbican, man the gate, and attack anyone who might be attacking. So it makes sense to have the first floor be the guard room. Now, after you've had a battle or a confrontation, players need to feel rewarded and they need a rest, okay? After every battle, they need a reward and a rest, okay? So when they go to that second floor up the stairwell tower, the rest, the room where there's rest also has clues, maybe some food, maybe some important key to telling us more about the tower and its inhabitants. So rest and clues room is going to be our second floor. I wanted to call it the rest room, but then I figured that won't work. So I had to plug in rest and clues. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the next room, third floor is going to be a puzzle room. And the reason why that's important is because you also want to rest from just combat the whole time. The puzzle room is going to put your players to the task. They're going to try to figure out like, oh, okay, I want to solve this puzzle. I want to get to the next floor. We're also going to have the trap room on the fourth floor. A trap room can just be a room where there's a series of traps and challenges that the players have to go through to get to maybe the next floor or some item or important thing in that room. And then also maybe access to the next floor. Of course, it's a wizard's tower. So the wizard's room is gonna be that fifth floor. There's also a balcony there. And that's gonna be important. The balcony can be functional, it can be a privy. You know, maybe the wizard wants to poo on his attackers. That's why the privy is right above, you know, the barbican. And there's also going to be a loft on the top floor. And if a loft is basically like an attic space. And it also is going to have some open space up there. And we're going to put the dove cot up there. If you're not familiar with what a dove cot is, a dove cot is where you store your carrier pigeons. Okay? So in a dove cot or the loft is a good place to put a dove cot. And at the very top where the roof space is, there's a cupola that's open. A cupola has a lot of functions. A cupola can create... Uh, allows air to swap out, but we're also going to use it as an open space or open windows for the doves to fly out of the loft. Okay. All right. So now that we've designated what each floor is, we want to go over the floor plans. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We're going to go right into the next step. Feel free to ask any questions to our, to our moderator if you have any questions. There's a lot of people here who know a lot of things, so don't be afraid to ask. Let's jump into floor plans. The first one is going to be our foundation. Oh, I love the idea of a library. I'm going to have to do that in the next one. Let's go over the floor plans when you're doing this. And I'm going to turn on the grid as well so you can kind of see, because some of this is kind of built around the grid. The grid is really, really helpful. You, you start your grid, you turn it on, you set to how much you want it to be. And then you'll decide each one of those grids is five by five feet, five square feet. I'm doing 16 by 12, okay? Now I'm making a relatively small tower as it's only about 25 square feet. It's not massive. If you want your tower to be bigger, just make the columns smaller instead of bigger because the more columns you have, the more columns and rows you have, the smaller the squares will be. So less, bigger, more, smaller, just so you know. Okay, now you can see that the grid does line up at least a little bit with the grid just or the, the floor plan lines up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just know that your floor plans are just a guide. Don't worry about making them perfect where they show where every nook and cranny is, where details are. You only need to add enough detail to tell you where the structural parts are, okay? So the foundation is gonna have several components. It's gonna have a staircase that's gonna be wrapping around one of the corners and it's going to lead up to the barbican, which is that gatehouse. 
And it's also going to have lead right up to the entrance. So the Barbican is something that can be manned by the guards, and then it leads up the stairs. So let's just go with the flow of traffic here. Let's go ahead and put this up, all the way up. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the shadow. So up here, you're going to have, oopsie, let's boost up this, the width there a little bit. There we go. Much better. So attackers are going to have to go up here to get onto the platform or where the main base, where the tower is going to be resting. Okay, so we're going to be adding in defenses and other things besides just the Barbican. But this Barbican right here is a gatehouse. And you'll notice that it's very close to the tower itself so that it can be easily manned or controlled by whoever guards that are going to be coming out. This style, by the way, is the fantasy battle map style that I'm going to be using. But we also have a watercolor battle map style, which works really well, too. Okay, so now we have the foundation set up. Notice, too, where the placement of where the tower is right here. So you can see where it is. And I put a little arrow right here so you can kind of show where what we're creating. So you have an idea. So it's really helpful. So now that we have this concept of the foundation, we can go ahead and work on our next one. It's going to be the first through fourth floors. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Now, the only difference, though, is this, this first floor right here is actually going to have a door because that first floor is on the same floor as the foundation. So right here, you'll notice that there's a floor right here, a door right here. That is going to be there because, of course, the foundation is going to it's going to be on top of the foundation so you need to have access there's going to be the main room which is the main space that players are going to be walking around on and of course there's going to be a stairwell tower now i totally recommend stairwell towers on your towers because or an additional tower which is just a stairwell tower because the stairwell within the room is going to take up more space it's nice to have the players walk around freely instead of having to move around the staircase area so a stairwell tower which is an additional tower which is just does the stairwell is really really helpful and i recommend that the entrance to the stairwell be on a segment of the grid so that whatever vtt you're using you're, when you step onto that it's going to teleport you to the next room so make sure to line up the grid to where the entrance of the stairwell because you don't have to show the players actually walking up or down or whatever through the stairs you just need to put it on a square that's going to line up with a portal that's going to take you to the next room whatever the vtt it is you're using hello vaxillion welcome oh valixion sorry i pronounced your name wrong so you have those first floors then you have this fifth floor and that's going to be where our wizard's going to be and there's the main room that you can see and there's also the balcony right here which can be multiple functions it can be a privy it could just be something that the wizard just likes to look out and enjoy the view maybe they want to look down and see who's attacking their attacking their tower and there's going to be at the stairwell tower right here and of course the dovecot or the stairwell that leads up to the dovecot okay so those these are all the floors. The last one is going to be that dovecot, dove dove which is going to be actually in the loft space. And the loft is open in the center. That's why you kind of have this space right here. This space is open and looks down on the fifth floor where the wizard is. It's also going to work as ventilation. And maybe the light that comes from the cupola can also naturally light up that space. And then there's going to be a staircase right here of course that entrance that leads from the fifth floor up to the loft okay all right now real quickly i want to do a quick wall demo because some people have the question like how is it that i piece together each wall to make a floor or to make a structure i'm hesitant to do a whole stream on this because we're working on this really awesome really 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 awesome room tool which is going to make wall tetris which is just assembling walls rotating them and assembling them you know inadequate or irrelevant so of course what really really helps is to um i mean of course when we get the room tool this won't be relevant anymore so I, like i said i'm just hesitant to do a full-on stream about this but let me do a real quick demo 
so that you know how to put wall pieces together. And the trick is always simple. When you're making any shape, Start with a square first or a rectangle, and then you can build off from there. And what I do is you turn that grid on, and then you line up the walls to fit on it, okay? So here, I've got the walls outside of the grid right here, but you can move them to where they're perfectly centered onto the grid. It's up to you how you want it to set it up. Once you've kind of made that first L shape, then you can just select it. Just go copy, paste. You can rotate it and then put it together like this. So this is the bare, the, the very basics of putting together your little wall Tetris. And of course, I'm going to line it up to where you can see the six by six grid here or the three by three, which is going to be six square. Okay. So it's very helpful to line up the grid and to use copy and paste when you're assembling floors. Okay. And of course, Again, like I said, when we get that room tool, you won't have to do this wall Tetris anymore. You're going to be able to just use the room tool and it'll be so much easier. But these are the bare basics on what you're going to be doing when you want to put together your walls. Make sure that grid is on. Make sure that you just use a lot of copying and pasting. And remember to start with the large Start with the largest part of your building first. Make the L shape, copy, paste, rotate, and then start making pop-offs that go that extend outside of it so by pop-offs i mean let's just say this is the main structure you can delete this piece here if you want to put another piece right here or if you want to put a circular piece right here or if you want to extend this piece out like this if you start with the basic shapes first you won't have to worry about like oh i want to put this elaborate shape together you don't have to do that start with the box with the box or rectangle first, and then you can expand the shape further from there, okay? That's how easy it is. But once we get that room tool, it'll be even easier. Okay, let's jump in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the grid off for now. We don't need this. Let's go start with our foundation first, okay? Now you're gonna notice that, that I did put a path right here to kind of show where the tower, the base of the tower or where the tower is going to be resting. And of course, I'm putting that there so I don't accidentally put any stamps in that area. Okay, now you're going to notice again that we talked about the defenses. Attackers will have to go up this staircase and then we'll have to come into contact with this Barbican or gatehouse. So this is the defenses that we have. If they're able to break through the defenses, then they'll be able to access the platform where the, the tower rests. Now we're going to add, we're going to want to add some details about, add some details to this, but we're going to put together, like you've seen the main structure here. I've made the staircase wrap around one of the corners and that is probably the easiest thing. Personally, th there are a lot of really odd, weird shapes that you can make with the walls to make a base for your tower. You can make it a rectangle. You could make it an octagon, a hexagon, whatever the shape is. But I'm going to do very simple shapes, just squares, because it's just easier to work with. And you, if you're kind of new to it, squares are easy shapes or rectangles are easy to work with. Those 90 degree angles are so much easier to work with than making advanced shapes like hexagons, the polygons, things like that. So stick with squares. If you feel like you're familiar with the tool, use more advanced shapes. I'm gonna go up into the foundation and put down some details because the details are what really decide what's going on on the floor or the room that we're putting in. Now you'll notice that I put in some defenses that let's just say that you're, you're gonna see here that there is a wheel right here that actually controls the gate. So this is that part where I'm talking about function to fantasy, okay? There are some traps and some mechanisms in here that are purely function, okay? This thing right here controls the gate that's beneath the top of this bar the Barbican's wall walk on top, okay? So if you want wanted to, you could go in and have access to the tower. Let's say maybe some monsters are following you and you've gone in, you can shut the gate behind them so they can't attack you. You're also gonna notice that there is also a trap right here. And let's consider it one of the, another defensive mechanism that just, let's say that 
the player that the defenders have this trap where they're, they this spiked piece right here slams up against the wall and attacks you and your players right okay so another defense mechanism there and the lever for that mechanism is right there and the other details that we have of course is that there's a gate right here so another obstruction from you and your players getting onto that main platform and of course i've added in just a little something special in right here i like to add on the exterior maybe one little puzzle or an area where players can explore look for clues maybe there are clues that tell them what they can expect on the next floor or tells them a secret about the backstory of the wizard that lives there or maybe you know there's something in this area that tells more about the backstory of the tower, the history of the tower. And what I've added in this area is really just a fountain right here. And one thing you could do with this puzzle is say that maybe you can't actually access the door that leads to the first floor because of this puzzle down here. So you could say that maybe there's a weight pressure system inside the fountain. Maybe with the bucket, you have to pull water out and dump it and then that will maybe affect this hourglass mechanism right here and then of course once that's unlocked it will open up the door that leads into that first floor so throwing in puzzles traps something clues something to explore for your players so that way they're not bored to death outside of the tower so you know we're basically the siege is going to be a part an exciting part of it as well as the the puzzle that exists on the foundation here. So always think about things that your players can interact with, and that makes it just so much for them as players. All right, let's go ahead and open up the next floor. I'm gonna turn on uh, a filter here that's gonna kind of hide a little bit of the base floor, the foundation, and I'll go ahead and open up that first floor right here. So here's our first floor. And you're going to see that there is an access, of course. There's a door right here. And then, of course, you'll see the stairwell tower. And we're going to talk in a little bit of depth about stairwells, especially circular ones, because sometimes people struggle with, well, how do I portray a part of the staircase going up and another part of the staircase going down? So we're going to be covering that in depth. This floor, it's only going up, so we don't need to show it going both down and up, unless you wanted to add like maybe a crypt or something inside of the foundation. Now I made the foundation completely solid, which makes sense because that tower needs gonna need a sturdy foundation for it to rest upon. Now, once you've created the shape of the room, then you're gonna wanna start adding details. Remember what we said about this, this first floor? It was gonna be the guard room. It's where the guards need to leave the room and they need to go out and man the defenses from your players who are trying to siege it. So let's go ahead and open up the first floor. Let's open up the details. And we can talk about the things that you add to a floor to give it the theme. So this is the guard room. And so the details you put in that floor are going to tell you about that floor. So you'll notice that there's some weapons, some cards, and it kind of says to you, oh, hey, there are some people that are sitting here, you know, just enjoying their time until, you know, maybe the alarm is held. So you've got playing cards, you've got weapons here. There's a chest down here, and there's also a light source. And I recommend having at least one light source on every floor to that, so that it can help you to give it a more uh, 3D look. Light sources, light and shadow are what give things depth. And so it's really important to throw in one light source, then throw in some lights on top of that to kind of give it this nice kind of warm feeling. Okay, so all these things, all these details kind of make it very clear that this is kind of a guard room. That's the secret. Details tell the story. You don't have to label it the guard room. You just need to put things in the guard room so that it looks like that. And it's exactly what it looks like, at least to me. It's got the table for guards to kind of shoot the shit and take their time and enjoy before maybe the alarm is, is sent off and things like that. So nice to have. Now, I want to just mention one thing about the stairwell is, is that because this one only goes up, 
At the end of the stairwell, you can put a wall segment to show that the floor, that the staircase ends, right? The staircase ends right here. You can also take a shadow and put it on this side right here to show that the, that wall piece is above. It's the foundation above that holds the staircase. And so this is the way that you would portray that, hey, there's another floor going up. It's just hidden. All right. So now we know a little bit about the floor's purpose the details that bring that floor together. Let's go do another floor. Let's go ahead and just hide this first floor and we'll go ahead and do our second floor. Now, the second floor is not the base floor. So I've used wood as the floor. Normally when you put together your floors, you all you need to do is just fill it with the add mode of the mask tool or because, or if you want that add that layer, the add layer or the FG layer to stay attached to the floor, you would put a clipping mask underneath of this, okay? And then that way you can paint whatever you want on top of it. But for the purpose of this stream, I have went ahead and used stamps as the floor so that that way I'm not picking up whatever texture is gonna be on the FG layer. This stackable approach to floors doesn't work if you don't use stamps as the floor. But normally for you players, for you DMs, you're gonna end up using a, using, I would recommend just using a clipping mask. So that way you can move the floor anywhere you want. And that's what you'll end up doing. It's up to you. We don't have a VTT yet or anything like that. So what will end up happening is, is that you'll create each individual floor and then you'll disperse them in an arrangement on the map. We'll get to that part later. Let's just assemble each floor first and then we'll talk about how to place each floor in an arrangement on the whole canvas so that that way um, when you're using your VTT or whatever program you're using, you'll be able to just jump to the next floor. There's nothing that you have to change with the uh, the floor. So this this approach, this way that I'm putting this together is simply for the use of the stream. All right, so second floor, let's open it up. Remember what I mentioned? The floor is made of wood, and the reason why is because you don't need to create a stone floor for every floor because the higher up it goes, the more foundation it's going to need. Stone is heavier than wood, so it only makes sense to use a floor that's made of wood and planks instead of stone because you'd have to create a series of arches to hold up each floor made of stone, and there's no point in doing that. Using wood, because it's so much lighter, you just need to use trussels or whatever, not trussels, but whatever um, frame framing that you're going to be using to prop up the floor. It's just going to be a lot easier that way. So when you do floors above the base floor, just use wood. And this applies to any floor. If it's a temple, if it's a castle, if it's just a regular house, you can put stone on the base floor, put wood on the upper floors because it's just a lighter material, less likely collapse, and it won't be as much, you won't need as much support and material to prop up that floor. Let's go onto the second floor and add the details. Remember, this was the floor where there's gonna be rest. So in the rest room, <laughs> you can add details like maybe there's um, some food, a pantry up here. You'll notice that there's a, a shelf of food right here. You know, the guards got to eat and so does the wizard, right? So having some place, this is that functional part, right? The functional part is, hey, they need to eat. So of course it makes sense to add some place in the tower where the guards or the wizard can eat, right? There's also some uh, notes on the floor. These could be maybe the notes of from the journal of the wizard that tells you a backstory. Maybe it's notes from pre uh, journal entries or letters from the previous adventurers that, that showed up here to defeat this wizard and they failed. And maybe they're telling you secrets about how to defeat the wizard. Or maybe it's just some backstory about the tower or its occupants. Hey, first time chatter, Solary. Solary Z Fox, welcome, glad you're here. So add some clues on this floor so that players have 
something to do on this floor. If you want, you could have maybe a guard follow them up the staircase, and maybe there's like maybe it's a little battle that takes place up here. It's up to you. But for me personally, this is the room of rest and gathering clues. It's a place where players can heal, gather their items for the next battle that may take place, things like that, okay? I put a statue in the center with some flowers around it. Maybe there's an inscription on the statue that tells you a little bit about uh, the tower or whatever it is. Let's talk about the stairwell. We're now on the second floor, which actually, the stairwell is gonna take you down to the first floor, but also take you up to the next floor. How do you create that? It's not complex. Really, you just have that st that stairwell that's just going up, and all you need to do is just take a wall piece, put an object shadow on it, make it deep, and you'll notice that this staircase leads up, right? Well, if you wanna go downstairs, you would go down the stairs going to the bottom floor. So really, staircases are really simple to create for going to access to flu two floors. You just need to put a little wall segment wherever you want in that area and then boom that's it you've created technically a staircase that goes down and that goes up it's not complex right it's just so easy because you can sometimes staircases can be really confusing don't let yourself get confused just put that wall piece there to help you show that there are access points to each floor the upper and lower floors that's how simple it is okay all right so we've kind of set what this floor is for. We've got the details. It's clearly a room of rest. Also a pantry as well. Maybe that's, you know the guards want to go up and have a little bit of food. Unless your wizard is a total jerk and is like, you guys don't get to eat no food for you, right? <laughs> hey, the wizard is a baddie. So hey, where, where are they? Are they chaotic evil? Are they neutral evil? Where are they, okay? If they're totally evil, that food is all theirs, okay? <laughs> All right, so we finished that floor. Let's go do the third floor, which is gonna be, I think, our puzzle floor, but just in case, let's just go ahead and put it up. I think this is actually the puzzle floor. Okay, now just like I did before in the original st the staircases I just mentioned, notice the access points, one going up, one going down, okay? Same thing. You can do this to all the floors except for the top floor because once you're on the top floor, you don't need two separate access points. You're on the top floor. You only need to show the stairs going down. Now, some things about the fa about this floor, notice that there is indeed a wooden floor. Notice also that there are four pillars that act as foundation to kind of hold up the next floor. Maybe there's something heavy up there. Who knows, right? But we can just put those pillars there just to add a little bit more, add a little bit more function to the to the floor. Okay. Now, also notice some things here that there is a some jail or some barred door, and this barred door is actually closed. Okay. One thing that you can do also, if you're confused about, hey, which way does a f does a door swing open and closed? One thing that architects do is they show the swing radius of a door. You can totally just use the path and or use some curved text to represent the the door the swing door radius, so that that way you're not confused which way the door opens. It could be for yourself, for your players, whatever you want. And of course, if you have a door that is locked, you there needs to be some kind of visual on the map that that shows that hey this door is locked i've added a little wooden cog right here to show that there's a mechanism that's in the foundation of the floor or in the floor a group that i have here to replicate to show that hey something is going to be happening with that door so that door is locked and it needs to be opened so let's go ahead and open up that third floor and show the details and what we've added is a couple things on this floor. And to know what to put on this floor, I took inspiration from the floor that's below us. Remember there was a little pantry right there for guards? Well, notice here that maybe a guard came up here, came from the lower floor, brought some food and ate it in this corner right here. Notice that there's a chest right here. It's not locked. 
Perhaps there's something in the chest that might be important, journals, books, an important item that's going to be necessary to either advance to the next floor or defeat the wizard. You want your players to explore every inch of the floor. And I've been guilty of this before. Some players are just going to want to jump to the next floor. They might be impatient. No, keep them on that floor, make them explore, and try to find things to make them interact with the floor. Now, because this floor is locked, they can't advance. But we've got a mechanism right here that kind of shows that... There, this puzzle needs to be solved if you want to advance to the next floor. For me, this puzzle, what I would and suggest is maybe, this is just something that I added in, was that perhaps that this mechanism right here, there are three orbs, a green one, a red one, and a blue one. And there's an orb on each floor below this floor that you have to put on each one of these tiles. And one thing I also recommend about puzzles is making them two steps, but don't make them too complicated. Perhaps all of your players, all of your players um, found all the orbs and they've put them in the right tile, but something's not working right. You've pulled the lever and it didn't work. I've added an instrument right here, and maybe one of your players can, who has a proficiency in music, they have a bard, and the bard can play a tune that causes those orbs to resonate and then activates the trap. So two segment, tra two set, not trap, but puzzle, two segments or two stage, um, two stage mechanisms or puzzles are really really helpful and kind of fun it challenges your players to think like oh i thought i've done everything there's something else whatever you do though do not make the puzzle so impossible to solve make it simple but you know if the simple is like oh gosh anyone can figure this out then add that second stage make that second stage simple you don't want it to be 15 stages in this puzzle, you want to make it easy enough, but also adding the stages to give it the level of difficulty and complexity, okay? And notice that there are some notes on the floor as well. Maybe those notes say, hey, these orbs, uh, they, they interact with certain sounds or notes. So throw in a clue there to help them, your players figure out the next stage of the puzzle, okay? Super important that you do that. Okay, let's go ahead and hide this third floor and go up to the trap floor. Uh, the way that I made these things, oh yeah, absolutely, the musical road covered it. All I did was just group each floor and then drop the opacity to zero so that that way they're hidden from view. And then I can just click the floor and then click the opacity again uh, up to 100 so it shows up. So that's all how it works. Okay, let's set the opacity of the fourth floor to one, and you're going to notice some things about this floor. Oopsie. You're going to notice that there is some more internal walls. It's going to create a kind of pathway for f players to um, navigate. So if you go from the staircase, you're going to see there's some navigation going on, the flow of traffic leading to some end goal. You're going to notice that there's a trap right away in the stairwell. Okay, and that maybe can be turned on or off by maybe a magic spell or whatever that you can concoct for your players to figure out. I just put that first trap there right by the stairwell to indicate to the players, hey, this is a trap floor. If one of the first things they see coming up the steps is a trap, they can assume that, hey, this floor might have some traps on it. So giving some inkling or clue to what the players are going to be encountering might allow them to kind of work together to discuss how they're going to approach tackling the challenges on that floor. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and go on to the fourth floor and show the details on that floor. And I put a series of traps that the players have to navigate to get to that end goal. That chest right there might be some essential item that's necessary to defeating the wizard on the tower. So it's absolutely necessary that they get to the end of this. And we're going to go over each trap here. The most simple of traps is floor traps or bear traps. They're easily they're easy to trigger. You just need to put something on there for it to trigger it, put a weight on there, whatever it is. You can make the floor really, really dark 
so that the floors are hard to see. Maybe you have some players who are half elf or have elven blood and that allows them to see in the dark. And so maybe that player will take the lead and say, hey, I'll show, tell you what each trap is because it's dark. Let's congregate, work together to decide how to challenge, challenge each trap. Hey, Tony Mumpe, welcome. Glad that you're here. So once they've undone this trap, they go to this next trap right here, which seems to be a rotating trap with spikes or barbs. But notice that there is a trap or a arm that's missing. So maybe it's about timing. As it spins, each player has to do the timing to get to the next section. Okay. And you're also going to see that there's a saw trap. There's some spikes on the walls. Maybe they go in and out with a rhythm, with timing. Maybe there's a magic instrument that deactivates them. There's a lot of different things that you can come up with. And of course, not traps are not going to be visible to your players, but I'm putting them on the map so that DMs know like, hey, how is it that I should put together traps? Now, there is a lot of traps on this floor and there's not a lot of room to maneuver. So I only recommend just putting maybe one or two traps on a floor, unless your tower is massive, then you can put as many traps as you want. So this is just an example to show the kind of traps that you can put on a trap floor. All right, a lot of different ones you can go with. Okay, of course, once they've tackled all the traps, deactivated them, backtracked to the stairwell, they can go back up to the next floor which is where the big bad boss is it's more our magic wielding jerk is and what i like to do with the wizard tower not something you'll notice about the fifth floor is that it's bigger than the lower floors because it's the top of the floor and of course the wizard kind of lives here works here whatever and so they want more space and you're going to notice that I put some supports, like some pillars on here. There are these pillars right here. You'll notice that I've put the shadows going away. So I'll put some light sources in the center there. And you'll notice that the stairwell is no longer wrapping further up. It's only going, excuse me, going down. So if you go down the stairwell, to the next floor. Remember, this is technically the top floor. The stairwell stops there, okay? And then this stairwell right here, or this staircase, is gonna lead up to that loft right here, okay? Now, when I'm putting in details for the boss room, I like to make it stand out more and add some things that give it kind of a really, really nice, decorative feel. It's a boss fight, right? You want the that map or you want that floor to be memorable. So add some ritzy or elite-like uh, ornaments. Notice that there's some statues right here, and you can even incorporate the statues as being a part of the battle, right? Sometimes a battle doesn't have to just be hack slash hack slash. It can be dodging projectiles, moving around the room, interacting with something in the room while trying to combat the wizard, going up to the next floor, looking for clues. There's a lot of different things that can take place in a boss battle. Don't limit yourself to just a regular encounter where you're just dodging things and then hacking and slashing. Add interactive elements on the floor that makes the battle way more unique, whether it's a rock, that's that you can jump on top of and doing a dive down thrusting motion, whether it's a second, an, a loft space where you can kick the enemy down off the loft and they land on the ground for some fall damage. There's a lot of different things that you can do. So be creative. Combat should be entertaining. It should be uh, fun. It should be interactive and it should present a challenge, but not be so difficult that your players want to give up. Okay. Now, there's some other things on the floor as well. There's a balcony right here. That balcony can be used for multiple things. It could be a, it could be uh, just a place where the wizard just likes looking out the windows and checking out the view. Or maybe you want to put a privy right here and, you know, this is where the poo falls down. Whatever. Maybe there's a guard or some kind of servant that picks up that 
<laughs> picks that up. So maybe they use it as a defense mechanism. <laughs> a lot of different fun things that you can use this balcony space for, but it also breaks up. You notice that every floor that we've worked with has been square, okay? Some of the things that I added to make the floor more interesting is of course the stairwell tower, which adds a circular element. And of course the balcony acts as a circular element that kind of makes it more interesting because remember this is the boss battle floor don't just settle for the basic square shape add in some extra elements to make it a little less symmetrical that's something i can recommend about uh your structures is if, it, if your structures are perfectly symmetrical it's kind of antagonizing to the eye unless the structure is supposed to be symmetrical you can always throw in elements always throw in other elements to make it less symmetrical as well, whether it's interior or exterior elements, architectural elements. Okay, so super, super helpful. Let's go ahead and throw in the details on the fifth floor as well, because you're going to want to see those. And one thing that I like to do is to throw in something that's going to show like, hey, this must be the wizard's space. Okay, some of the things that I've added were some i've added a statue at the top of this little stairwell piece right here that could be interactive maybe there's a spell that you have to do to activate some mechanism that's in that statue um whatever it is it might be remember there's also these statues right here uh, i've added in a circular just a very tropey thing that's like in the occult that's in your wizard tower. It's just a ring of candles around a summoning circle. Uh, maybe the wizard has made a pact with a demon. Maybe that is the eye. Maybe that's where the demon is. Maybe you have to attack that. Maybe, um, maybe the eye opens and closes at certain points in, in a combat. Maybe the combat is phased based. The first phase is to draw out the wizard and to get them to attack you. Maybe you have to go upstairs uh, and jump off of the loft to attack the eyeball. There's a lot of different things, so make the combat interesting. The other details that I've had is, of course, some wizardly things. We've got an hourglass there, which might you might be able to interact with. And if you don't know what to interact with, at least just grab it and smack someone over the head with it, because, hey, blunt objects, they work, okay? It's gonna hurt if someone whacks you over the head with something heavy. Same thing with that book. You don't know what it's for, just grab it and just smack that wizard upside the head, okay? Wizards need to be smacked upside the head once in a while, okay? It's just how it goes, all right? And notice that there are some notes on the floor to kind of represent that, hey, you know, it's always nice to add, when you're adding details, it's always to add, nice to add some things to the floor. And the reason why is because if your floor is perfectly bare, it loses the idea of use. Throwing down some, whether something got spilled on the floor, notes, rugs, throw something on your floors to break up that clean floor. Unless it's, you know, meant to look pristine, I don't recommend that. I would definitely recommend putting spills, blood, moss, um, cracks, whatever it is you want to put on your floor to give it a feeling of use okay because you don't want the floor to be perfectly pristine it doesn't look like it's been used at all it just looks like a clean floor you want to add some dirt you want to add some fun things that makes it more interesting i also want to mention the balcony over here i put some light sources in the openings those black parts are actually just more of the wall that you can't see that's why i made them black but i put some light sources in between to show that this opens up into the outside. Happy New Year, Commander Bond. So glad that you're here. Okay, we're almost done. We got about 12 minutes left in the stream. We still got to cover the dove, the dovecroft, and we have to cover how to make ceilings, okay? Because ceilings or roofs, sorry, roofs are really kind of complex and difficult to put together. So I want to explain how I put together roofs myself so that you can see how to make them as well. Okay, let's go ahead and turn off that fifth floor and let's jump into the dovecot and then move on to the roof. The roof, the rough, the roof, however you say roof. <laughs> 
So this is going to be the dove cot. In fact, I'm going to turn on the fifth floor as well so that you can kind of see because the fifth floor is just right below. And because it is a loft, I want to put in um, that bottom floor so you can kind of see what it looks like. I'm going to drop the opacity of the fifth floor because I do want you to see what's beneath it because you can see that there is a, you can see the floor below it. That opening is important for multiple reasons. It acts as uh, it acts as lighting that can flow up and light up the dovecroft, and as well as it might be used to remember your players go up the floor and then jump off and maybe try to attack the eye or whatever it might be. The other thing I want you to notice is that everything is made of wood because this is a loft. The loft is in the rafters, the rafters of the roof, okay? So everything is made of wood and it's not made of something heavy. You don't use heavy materials on the upper floors. You use lighter materials outside of, of course, the exterior walls. The walls themselves can be made of stone. They need to be thick for defense purposes. But inside, your loft is in the attic space. It's in the roof space the attic space, so it's gonna be made of wood, okay? Remember, lighter materials, when you start making walls on upper floors, use lighter materials like wood. On the lower floors, you can use stone, at least for the interior part. I don't recommend using stone the higher up floors that you go, you're gonna be using wood, okay? Let's also add some uh, details to it. Remember, this is a dove cot. Now, if you're not familiar with what a dove cot is, a dove cot is where you store your carrier pigeons. A little history about carrier pigeons. You might wonder, well, how exactly did that work? It's actually really simple. Doves or the whatever bird you're using, it could be a crow from a Game of Thrones. It could be uh, an eagle, whatever you want to use for a carrier pigeon. It doesn't matter. It's fantasy. It's up to you. Okay. A little history. The bird is raised since birth at a certain location and then moved on foot, on horseback, whatever, to a different location. That bird is is given a note on its back, its, its, its talons, it's on its leg, wherever you want to put it at. And then they will, when you release them, they will fly back to the place that they were raised. So that's how carrier pigeons operate, okay? And it's always fun to add in some fun things. You notice that Game of Thrones had fun throwing in the importance of carrier crows, sending a crow. A messenger system is really, really helpful. It's also functional to your world, and it's also fun to come up with some world-building elements as well. Now, so the details that I've added in here are, of course, as you would expect, doves, okay? You've also got some scrolls lying around. Of course, there are scrolls running around. This is a dovecroft. This is where your carrier pigeons are going to be. Some scrolls make sense. I've got cages right here. Totally makes sense to have cages. And just for fun, I put stuff on the floor. Just a little bit of bird poop, okay? Because, hey, there's doves everywhere. They're going to poop. So it makes sense to have a little bit of poop up there. All right? I know I'm obsessed with poop. I'm sorry. I'm just putting it in here, okay? The other details are... I've added some fence, some rope fencing around the opening. And of course, I've added a section where it's been broken open a little bit. And this is to kind of show, to give a hint to your players like, hey, you can jump off of here. You can jump off and land on that eyeball right there. So it's just to give an inkling like, oh, hey, maybe I should jump off of here and get more damage. Maybe I can throw a bomb down there, whatever. Okay, it's just to give your players an inkling like, hey, I can do this, all right? Throwing in elements that give players a hint is helpful because sometimes players are going to get stumped, and that's okay. Your job as a DM is to guide them through it without being totally obvious, and you don't. it's less work for you, less explaining of something to a player or to your players if you throw in visual cues that make it more obvious for your players, okay? All right, so that's the Dovecroft. Let's go ahead and do the last thing, which is going to be your roof spaces. I love roof spaces. So let me just turn off the Dovecroft and fifth floor. And I'm going to turn off the filter because the roof is part of the exterior. So I don't need to hide. I don't need to hide or diminish that floor at all. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and throw down the roof. Now making a roof can seem 
kind of complex. And roofs are actually, they're quite difficult to put together. But if you have that visual, if you have that visual where you can see the actual roof, then it's more helpful to you, right? If, you, if you're just trying to figure it out, piece it together without a visual, it's going to be very, very difficult. So having that, gu having that guide there is really, really helpful. And I'm gonna use the arrows to kind of show where each roof piece is so you know. And you're gonna notice that there's the main piece, which is just the where the loft is, that big square, piece is one composite stamp, okay? And I just scaled it up to get the right size that it shows that it's the same scale and size as the fifth floor, as the walls. Once I've added that, then I go next and I throw in the roof pieces, what are called ridge caps. That's gonna be these wooden parts right here. Let me go ahead and turn off the guide here real quick. I don't think we're gonna use that right now. I'm just gonna turn it off. The arrows kinda get in the way. Okay, once I've added in the main roof piece, remember, it's just one whole piece. You don't have to piece all these together. That's what's really nice. That's what composite stamps are for. Less work for you. Throw down that roof piece. Then I put down these wooden parts right here that make it look like um, there's just more details to the floor. And then, of course, I added in these window where they're called dormers this is the roof part that covers a dormer the trick to making this piece right here not blend in too much with the floor piece is to use shadows what i've done is i've taken an object shadow and pushed the shadow in the direction to where the window is okay so the shadow is right here at the base where the window would be showing same thing here same thing here Okay, the shadow needs to be directed with the X and Y offsets to go to where the window opening is. This gives it the illusion of depth. I can tell you that ambient inclusion or shadows is how you show depth. How is it that this thing, this part of the roof is higher up than this? Two things, stacking it. You notice that it's on top. This part is covered right here. This part of that main section is covered. And I've also added a object shadow, a thick, heavy, dark object shadow to make it look like it's propped up above. So using object shadows, or if you're a power user, you can use paths, totally up to you. This is the way that you assemble your roof pieces, okay? Now, once you've added in those decorative pieces, you can throw in the other roof pieces as well. And that is, you'll notice that there's the top of the stairwell tower right here. That needs a roof piece, okay? It's got an angled, a pitched roof, circular pitched roof. So I used a circular roof piece like this. And then I added a stool as like a cap that just goes on top of it. And it's just to give it a better feel to it, okay? I want you to also notice that the shadows, even though I screwed up a little bit, the shadow on this one should be like this. You'll have to rotate it so that the shadow faces the certain way, because it's really important that when you are putting together, when you are putting this together, that the shadows all match the same. So you'll notice that the shadow is all on this side. Same thing here, same thing here. Okay, the shadows are going this way. That's the projection of the shadows, while the light source is going this way as well. So continuity and light source and shadows is super, super helpful. Otherwise, it's going to look weird if this part has the shadow and then this circular part does not. So be very, very conscious, conscientious about the shadows. And this applies to more than just roofs, but for the roofs, which want to make them look nice is being conscientious of the shadow. So that's super important. And of course, one other thing that I recommend is throwing in some greenery. When you throw in some vines on the roof or on a wall somewhere, it gives it the feeling that time has passed right? That things have allowed to grow and overtake certain sections of your structure. And it's nice because what makes a structure believable is its interaction with nature, right? You have 
the unnatural, which is the construction part of the tower, but then you also have vines growing on sections of the tower. That's the natural part. And it gives it a very much more realistic feel to it. If you want more realism, if you want more function, add in a little bit of nature to make it look nice. Okay, now the last things that I've added are two important things. To show that this is a cupola and there's an opening to the dovecot, I've added in a dove right here. It only makes sense, right? Put a dove right there so that it shows like, hey, that cupola must have some open windows for those doves to get out. This is that cupola right here. You notice that I've added in three vertical lines right there. Those are the openings for the doves to leave the dovecot. That's what that cupola is for. It's for allowing them to escape. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could even release the doves from the balcony right here as well, if the wizard prefers. Totally up to you what parts you want fantasy, what parts you want function. All right, it's four o'clock now. I'm gonna do one last thing before we move on, and that is I wanna show you how to piece together sections of the how is it to sprawl out all the different rooms on the map so let's go in real quick i'm going to go ahead and turn off the diagram i don't need the diagram anymore but what i do need is i do need the first floor and the foundation i'm going to select these and i'm going to scale them down i'm going to scale them down so we're just going to allow them to scale down i recommend that you turn your grid on too so that you can scale them down properly so you're going to have to change up the grid, of course. And the way that, that you could do this is really, really easy. You could just say you want to double it. So instead of 16 by 12, it would be 32 by, by 14 or not 14 by 24. So if I put in 32 here, it'll add more squares and it's scaled down. Okay. All I did was just double it. Okay. Once you've done that, then you can take each section and put it on the map. So you got your dovecot section. Let's go ahead and turn all these floors on as well. Turn on all these floors. Just ignore the arrows. We've got our fifth floor. And what you do is you arrange them. Let's go ahead and scale them down even more, I think. We'll make them even smaller. Let's scale them down. Now this is actually the hard part because you have to do a little bit of math with the grid. So I usually just double the amount so that that way it fits on there. And you can obviously rescale re or resize the map, which is totally okay. Notice that, you know, the five by five square fits in with the staircase, right? It fits in. So I recommend that. And you might have to rescale it. Let me just go ahead and just move each floor. And the way that you would arrange them is I recommend clockwise. So what I would do is take the first floor and I would put it right here and add a little bit of space between each floor because you don't want the players to see some of the other floor when they're on another floor. So put a little bit of space between each placement of the floor. Let's go with the second floor. I'm gonna put it right here. Let's go ahead and take the third floor and we'll put it right here. Just ignore those arrows. Let's go ahead and take the fourth floor and put it right here. And then you have the fifth floor. So you're going to go, I'll show you the, how it works out. And then we're going to go with the fifth floor. That's perfect where it is. We'll put the dovecot right here. And then we'll go ahead and put the roof right here. Now, you don't need to have the roof if you don't want to. Uh, there can be some kind of access that gets to it. I like putting on roofs because I personally just absolutely love roof battles. I love encounters on them. They're just so much fun. There's so much that you can do. All my favorite campaigns and video games have roof battles. And so they're just a lot of fun. So totally, if you need to do that. And of course, when you've done that, you're going to want to just go ahead and take a floor and take take the color black and go ahead and put it over the whole thing press enter and then of course if you want to show some exterior to the foundation which is outside don't worry about that just go ahead and take a grass texture like this and just put it down like this 
And so this way, just a part of it is on is, is showing you the exterior of it. So whether you're using stone, whatever texture you want, okay? And then of course, uh, let's go ahead and make some room actually. Let's take the first, third, and fourth floor. And because I have so much room, let's move them over to here. There we go. Uh, for some reason, I just made, didn't really offer a lot of room. This should offer some more room. Ignore those arrows. Now the path that I'm doing this is, you start here, you go through this floor, then you go to this floor, then you go to this floor, this floor, this floor, to this floor. Okay, so that means that, of course, you're gonna want to put um, right here, on this square that's right here, that's gonna teleport you to this part, right, this part of the floor right here, okay? This square right here in your VTT, whatever you're using, it's gonna teleport you to right here, okay? If you're going up the stairs to the next floor, this is gonna teleport you to this part of the floor right here, okay? So that is how you pan out your individual floors because right now we don't have a VTT or anything, so the method that I use to make it by all these floors stacked on top of each other won't do you any good in VTT. So doing it this way where each floor is put separate from each other, that allows you to do every single floor in one run instead of having to say okay well i have to open up another map to get to this floor you want all your floors on one canvas so that way your players have access to each floor well hey that's it that's how simple it is it's not complex you just need to make each floor make sure i you can stack them on top of each other as i did and that works out great to make sure that the floors are lined up properly that the walls are put together right that it's the same shape once you've stacked them all together group them then you can move them from each then you can move them around onto each part of the floor so that's the method that you're going to be using okay all right, it's as simple as that. Go ahead and clone and edit this map. If you really like this map, you can totally use it. I don't mind. Obviously not for commercial uses, for commercial use, but if you have a campaign come up, personal use with your players, feel free to use this map. Feel free to change up the details. It's been organized in a way where everything can be moved and organized and changed. So definitely clone and use this map for your campaign or if you wanna use it for reference. I'm gonna go real quickly. Just going to show you what we're going to be doing next uh the next stream so that way you have an idea on what we're doing let's go ahead and just get out of here i'm not going to save it i'm going to quickly go into announcements and just show you what we're doing this month we have next week we're going to be showing you how to make ruins and i'm excited about that following week realistic water part two and we're going to be covering mangroves and lakes in the last one, we covered rivers and beach. So I'm gonna have fun. I love mangroves, I love lakes. I'll be showing you how to put those together. And of course, how to create water mills. That was transferred over from last month. So I'm excited about that. Whoa, it's Thursday over there, nothing? <laughs> mm. All right, okay, well that's it everybody. Thanks for sticking with me for a little bit longer. I know we went over our hour mark. It's been fun, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Discord and to go to over to the, the stream request channel because I want to know what you want to see. Let me know what you're looking for because I am always listening to our users about what they want to learn and what they want to put together. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. Hope you enjoyed the holidays. I'm going to see you all next week. Please stay safe and healthy, and I will see you all next week, okay? <laughs> Avita Zane, everyone.